Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahole, the second swing golf here at the PGA Show in Orlando, and I'm joined here by Travis Milliman to talk about the new Ping i530 irons. Um, yes, sir. It's a big year for Ping with some of the irons coming out. We got yeah. the blueprint models, we got the G730, and now we've got i530 as well that we're going to discuss today, adding into the lineup. So. Um, Travis, the year really of the iron here, exactly. Yeah, the year of the iron. You're covering all the bases here yeah. too, you know. And of course, G430 yeah. stays in as well. So, yeah. um, but I530. This is uh, can it sort of talk in my language here? I think uh, because as someone who kind of likes the, you know, at the, especially the top of the bag, that player assistance oh, yeah. type of iron, yeah. it's right on my alley. So, uh, Travis, get us started here. I530. Yeah. What I, do we got to know? I530. I think what uh, I530. The they just boil it down to the basics. This is a player assistance iron. This is an iron that is gonna be great for a consumer that wants to be playing Blueprint S, I-230. They want that like player's look, yeah. but they need more help with distance, right? So we're giving them the technology to help deliver that extra distance, but in the package that looks appealing to them. Like you mentioned, mm -hmm. it, I think it's a fan yeah. favorite, will be a fan favorite for um, that player who needs that look with that performance. So yeah. um, a lot of it's geared around how do we create more bending, more deflection okay. in design. So, Fun, fun fact, we actually designed this and manufactured similar to how we make our metal wood. So the uh, face material is a very strong miraging steel. It's the same material we use in our fairway woods and yeah. hybrids. The body material, same thing. Both of those are welded together to create very thin transitions. Essentially what we want there with thin transitions is just more deflection. We want okay. the face to move, right? Yeah. Uh, whereas our Blueprint T, Blueprint S irons are very much geared towards precision, giving consumers accuracy and precision. These are geared towards giving people distance, right? We need people yeah. with these irons to get more, um, more yards out of it. So those coupled together with our premium machine feature on the back surface. Yeah. It looks nice, right? It does. It does. It's it, there for it, a very you specific. You can see it too yes. and feel it, you know, there's it's part a, of that right there. Yeah. So being an engineer, yeah. this is an engineering feature for us. Sure. So we take this iron, we 3D scan at our supplier, machine very precisely to the correct thickness to save mass. When we can save mass high on the face and redistribute it lower, we lower CG. So it's kind of the double play of we have really um, a lot of deflection mm -hmm. from the construction, but the CG is drastically lower on this design, which gives more ball speed. Yeah. It's more in line with impact. So um, those two things coupled together give a really nice high yeah. flight with a lot of distance. Those are kind of the, some of the differences there between say the I-525 from a couple years ago. That yeah. You're gonna get just a little bit extra performance out of. And then one thing I want to ask about too, uh, these little Micromax grooves on there. Correct? Oh yeah. Yeah, so oh, yeah. I, I remember Good that eye. introduction the last couple of years. Uh, and I personally, in the testing that I've done, I've noticed how consistent the spin is from these things. That's kind of the goal with that design, yeah. right? Yeah, no, great question. Good eye too. They are small, right? Micro. Yeah, yeah, there's more so, of them and there's more small. of them. Yeah, yeah. so uh, Micromax groove, that is our technology where we basically looked at how to create the most friction from our face. Yeah. Uh, did a giant study on, okay, how many grooves do we need? How tight do they need to be? The radius values on the grooves. A lot of nitty gritties, but basically boil it down to is making them a little tighter together, uh, which enables us to get a couple more grooves on the ball at impact. Really what that does is help to normalize how much friction you'll get out of the fairway, out of the fairway and out of the rough. Yeah. Ultimately, we're trying to prevent flyers. Sure. Consumers that play I-530 or I-525, we have a ton of Arcos data that shows that consumers that play these clubs hit from the rough a lot, right? Yeah. Yeah. PGA Tour players I, hit their I, irons. I can, some, yes. You're that guy. No, yeah, you're not that I guy. Can, yeah. I, I am that guy. <laughs> I hit from the rough quite often. And I, yeah, and so I, I can totally test yeah. that. So uh, when we're looking at technology on how do we improve performance for that player, it's the, the turf condition they play in has an impact on that, right? So Micromax is here. We believe in it as a technology to help normalize spin and sure. launch across sure. the conditions. And then, lastly, before we let you go, Travis, I wanted to ask about um, the loft. And because yeah. there's such a heavy conversation oh, nowadays yeah. about the loft on some of these irons. So um, yeah. in terms of the, what is the kind of, the, let's say seven iron standard loft, and then I guess, what are you guys doing to make sure, obviously we talked about it already, but making sure that ball yeah. is providing enough trajectory and, and a steeper landing angle for golfers. It is, it is a tough one in the industry, right? Yeah. We want to be distance competitive when you go over to the hitting bay over here. Yeah. We want to make sure we're in the ballpark. Uh, it's a 29 degree seven iron. Okay. It's a little bit stronger than I-525, but uh, the metric we want to look at and how we design our clubs is how high does the ball go? right? When we are looking at the loft, that only tells part of the story. Right. Stopping power, the ability to actually gap these clubs appropriately is actually yeah. what you'll see on the course. So um, the lower CG, some of our, uh, how the iron actually deforms at impact helps to launch the ball as high as possible. So we're seeing equal playability from I-525 where we went a little bit stronger in loft, it's yeah. still getting in the air. Um, had a lot of really good remarks about that. And it's a great time to plug Copilot into that, right? When we're yeah. looking at 
how do we in incorporate loft progressions of these irons into actual playability gaps? Uh, it's, it's a great tool to use if you're comboing this with other sets or just looking at how was my set gonna gap, yeah. right? We wanna make sure we're not just servicing you in the hitting bay where you're gonna have long distance, but on the course, being able to stop it on the green, right? Right, exactly. So. That's, that's what our fitters are always paying attention to. Not just the distance, carry distance, it's right. spin rate, it's landing angle, all those things. Yeah, so so. Um, ping I-530 iron is gonna be awesome options for golfers in 2024 and beyond, really. Yeah. So uh, Travis, thank you for the time today. Thank We're gonna you. go do some testing on Let's these now. We're really excited about it. But yeah. um, thank you for your time again, Travis. This was Appreciate awesome. Appreciate it. All right, golfers, we are now back in the bay here at Second Swing in the Tour Van at Minnetonka with Jackie Johnson. Jackie, if you have been following the channel for a while, Jackie's been on the YouTube channel several times in the past. And today, back um, at Second Swing here with the I-530 irons. Um, Jackie, first of all, I know you've been fitting this one already. So yeah. I guess your first impressions through fitting the last couple of weeks here, what you've liked most out of the I-530. Uh, super good. Yeah. Um, been you know obviously with the i5 25 that was pretty popular too but this is i5 30 has been mm -hmm. dynamite um big big reason for it i think when you're talking about um forgiveness obviously everyone wants a little bit of packed forgiveness in yeah. there uh but on top of that i think for a lot of golfers they fall into this category of more of a player's distance type iron yeah uh especially with ping you know you got um, I-230 that has, you know, maybe a little less forgiveness, but it's going to launch the ball uh, pretty high and get mm -hmm. that and, and get that uh, height and, and spin for you, where the I-530 is, you know, obviously has a little bit less loft, but um, is going to have that tungsten weight to really help with the forgiveness, but also launch the ball yep. still in the air. So it's, it's a really good uh, combo, you know, obviously a little less forgiving than the G430, or even um, the 7.30. So um, good combination. We'll see what kind of result yeah. we get here today and hit away. Yeah, I like that. I like that. It's been, that's kind of the feedback that we've gotten on those irons. And I will also add too, there's the loft, uh, you know, the standard lofts are not super applicable for a combo set, yeah. but we've talked to, you know, Ping and they've said they can, you know, retrospect irons or you can blend them together so if you wanted, say, I-530 at the top and I-230 yeah, at the bottom yeah. of your set, you know, that's an option as well for maybe players that might be on the, towards the lower handicaps. Yeah, I would say, and like, you know, the look of it is really clean. Yeah. Um, just like the the iron shape itself is, I mean, the top line is, looks awesome. Yeah. Um, compared to like the G430 or G730, definitely smaller, right? So yeah. for me, I already like confidence wise, I have a little bit more confidence with this because this is like looks wise more similar to what I hit. Yeah. Um, versus the more forgiving irons, just a little bit more. It sounds crazy, but just not as confidence building. No, there, though, there's a hundred percent a confidence it's aspect a look to thing. it. Yeah. 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 If you, I mean, the last thing you want as a golfer is look down at your your club and this is ugly, you know. Yeah. Well, and yeah. Or and maybe and maybe more just like. It, it, it's more just familiarity yeah, you know, right. for a lot of players. So, um, yeah, I'm excited to hit this, kind of see what result we get. and Yeah. Yeah, swing away. Let's do it. Mm. Left you don't like that one? Uh, just left it open a little bit. I mean, a little bit, but that's still fine. Yeah. It's I a feel miss. like that's, if anything, it's on the right side of the green. Yeah. A little miss hit there. Just like, just kind of a behind the ball action there. Yeah, I hit the ground. No, well, still scooted to 154 total. I know that's kind of knocking the spin <laughs> down, but it was a good one. I like how high this ball is launching. Yep. We're at 22 degrees of launch, over 70 feet on that one in the air. What do you think about the feel? I mean, um, a lot of these shots are coming off the toe for me still right now. I would say even then, it still feels pretty dang good. But I can feel it. Yeah. Whereas, like... There's some feedback that you get. Yeah, that. the feedback is good. Whereas, like, with the G730 or the G430, like, you don't get as much feedback. Right. 
you know, obviously a little bit more forgiving. So I like that I can feel it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A little open club face, but. So that's, honestly, I didn't hit that great. And I really? know it's crazy, but like. Where was it on the face, or at least definitely, what you felt? definitely the toe. Really? Yeah. Okay. I was trying to um, close the face a little bit more here. Yeah. Try to. But fix. I mean, that's a pretty darn good result if you're not. Yeah. I mean, you're saying you kind of missed it. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's. I mean, that's kind of. I mean, out of this club, that's what you're trying to get yeah. on your miss hits. Like, I'd take that. That was good. Yeah, that sounded really good. Sounded towards the middle. Yep. Yeah. A little more distance, a little more efficient. But I like that a lot of these shots, even if you maybe slightly miss, are still launching and going as high. Yeah. Like that, that part's staying relatively consistent. That was pretty good, too. Yeah. Those last three were really, really consistent. Yeah, they're the pretty much shot. right next to each other, yeah. There we go. A good one to end it's on. The it's the highest one. ball speed so far, it looks like. Yeah, that, I was going to say that was. Wow. Okay. So let's see. What do we got? One, two, eight shots that we're going to look at here. We get the dispersion up here. Here's what that looks like. Um, what do you think so far? What, what, what do you see here, both either dispersion or, or numbers we can talk about that kind of jumps out at you? Um, yeah, I mean. With the exception of maybe one that was a little bit yeah. low on the face, maybe I, I would say that overall, like mm -hmm. pretty dang good. You know, yeah, this one was just maybe a slight miss there. You're down to one, three, three smash. Yeah. I mean, the dispersion circle, you take that one out is like, yeah, pretty dang good. That's good. So, yeah, and, I, I, and, and even, that's even like with me again, I think obviously I'm a little hard on myself when it comes to, yeah how well I want to make impact, but like even not hitting it great, I'm still yeah. getting super, you know, mm -hmm. a, a little bit more forgiveness out of it, obviously, um, getting consistency out of it with the numbers. I mean, you take a look at our consistency numbers on the bottom there. Yeah. I mean, you want those to be relatively low and like, yep. I mean, honestly, with all of them really dang good. I mean, plus minus in height, yeah. three, you know, feet is like, really good um when you're talking about fitting um and then you're talking about the consistency with yardage uh plus yep. minus 2.3 plus minus 2.9 like uh, yeah yeah you, you, you're, I you're, mean, and you said you weren't hitting all of them perfect no no um towards the end you kind of heated up and, and hit some good ones but there's i think the the part that i like the best is how it's launching on average really 23 degrees pretty high really yeah and that's that's really really good and then to see the height get over 70 feet on all these shots your landing angle is just under 44, I guess, um, which is maybe it's kind of right at that threshold of being kind of the, the right number. And obviously, if we talk about a soft green, these balls are going to stop, right? Yeah. Um, I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Now, well, again, and I think, too, you know, obviously, that. we're just hitting one stock shaft. So when you're talking about this club head, the club head's just performing off of what, you know, this is Ping's standard Alta CB regular. Yeah. So that's when, when you're talking about fitting, like you could really dial this sucker in and get yeah. maybe a little bit better um, results with a shaft, um, which obviously is part of the fitting process. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah, take a look at. Yeah, so I brought these up and you were right about it being off the toe. I think there's, I think there was probably something that as a fitter, you probably would do in this scenario yeah. um, to maybe adjust. Cause you see uh, pretty much all of these were towards the toe, not quite in the center, right? This last one up here, you got one kind of right in the middle, but um well so, and, and i've ingrained myself to never hit it off the heels so, yeah i'm actually the same way my yeah. miss is always toe side it's always so, toe so yeah. um part of this could be you know a little bit of length uh, a little bit of lie angle right maybe yeah. a combination of both you would probably adjust some things for yourself if this was a fitting session yeah but we kind of went with some standard options here yep just for the sake of the testing but i think there's a lot of positives here uh, for someone like you with your club speed today you know just over 70 to still hit your seven iron, you know, we're talking about 140 to 150 yards um, pretty consistently. We had plenty of launch on almost all these shots. Um, 
I think there's a lot to look forward to for a player that would fit into these, right? So. So Jackie, with the final thoughts, we'll kind of, again, have you explain maybe the golfer that will fit into I-530 the most or maybe yeah. benefit most from them. So we've talked about that already. You've hinted at it a few times, but I mean, you're, you've already fit these clubs several times. So what players have you seen that are going to get the most out of I-530? So typically, um, you know, when you're talking about the type of player, I think it's a wide range, to be honest with you. I think between, you know, even a higher single digit handicap all the way to a high digit handicap. Okay? Yeah. I think, I mean, I fit various people in this and, and a lot of it comes down to how you attack the ball. Um, I mentioned it off uh, camera, but like with the G430 and even the G730, a um, little bit wider sole. So yeah. for a lot of players that hit down on the ball, um, you start to see that the friction of that um, wider sole be potentially an, an issue to get through yeah. it. So like this I-530 has been awesome um, for a lot of players that I'm getting in, in the bay that I'm fitting is when they're hitting down on it, this club has just been better, yeah. you know? And, and, and it's just because of how they hit it. The, the nice part about it is, you know, you're not giving up a lot of forgiveness. Now I would say like, obviously the club head is a little bit smaller. Yeah. So some people get it in their hand, they're like, oh, like intimidated yeah. by it. But I would say after they're hitting it and realize that there's still forgiveness in there, it's yeah. just, it glides through the ball a little bit better for the player that um, needs it to, right? right? So, and again, it doesn't, it depends on how you how you swing at it, right? Yeah, so, I mean, that, that's that's how it is with every fitting. It's, right. it's, it's player dependent, swing dependent. But I think to your point, there is something there about the, you know, the, the way that the club glides through the turf. Now, again, this is in a, on a mat. Yeah. So, you know, it, it'll depend a little bit on the course that you're playing yeah. um, and, and the conditions. But there's less surface area on the sole that has to connect with the ground right. on the I-530, you know. So there's that piece that I know you're definitely feeling when you're swinging. Um, yeah, as, and I think a that's difference. a comment I made too, is just that with the G730, I felt like there was so much friction, I couldn't yeah. really control it a whole lot. And that was just, that's just like a me thing, right? Yeah. So like, you know, I, I felt like I hit the I530 better. And again, it could be just be familiarity with what I'm used to hitting, you know, and just simply the club makeup too, yeah. right? So um, yeah. I, think, I think when you're talking about the range that this fits it's it's all it's all over the board um mm -hmm. i even think like a single digit handicapper can benefit from this you know oh, yeah. you, you think about different brands and stuff you know p790s for example um good comparison with this yep. um you know t200 yeah. uh, you know they're all relatively aimed to do the same thing yeah. right so i, I like I the look of this one a lot though compared I, to I do yeah. yeah i do like the look of the i530 compared to um various other brands it's it's a good looking club and uh top line is good and clean so um yeah, yeah. overall good good hitting good. and yeah really uh, good testing good and results I, I think we also again I'll, I'll i'll we showed the impact locations you know i think this was probably not the proper fit for jackie being that the common miss for her was the toe side and so these are really just a bunch of kind of strikes on the toe side <laughs> and you're seeing how consistent it was even then yeah. so um, in a fitting, obviously, she'd get dialed in, probably gain a little bit more distance, a little bit more accuracy, move that dispersion a little bit left, and you have a really good iron yeah. for you. So um, ping I-530 irons, golfers go get fit, schedule that fitting online, um, swing by one of our store locations, uh, talk to an expert like Jackie, and get your game dialed in with ping I-530 irons. Really good stuff here. I think it's going to be a great year for ping um, in their irons. Great stuff. So Jackie, thank you for swinging by and, and hitting the shots today. Thank you.